In the 20th century, the theory of evolution was refuted not only by molecular biology, but also by paleontology, that is, fossil science. A second proof usually offered is the fossil record. According to most biology textbooks, fossils show the gradual development of life from simple to complex over hundreds of millions of years. But a growing number of scientists say that this textbook story is incomplete and even misleading because it ignores an extraordinary event in the history of life known as the Cambrian Explosion. The oldest stratum of the earth in which fossils of living creatures have been found is that of the Cambrian, which has an estimated age of 500 to 530 million years. In strata older than the Cambrian, no fossils of any creatures except a few unicellular organisms are to be seen. In the Cambrian period, however, many diverse species appear quite abruptly. More than 30 invertebrate species such as jellyfish, starfish, trilobites, and snails emerge all of a sudden. In Darwin's theory, if you think of the branching tree, Darwin's branching tree, the common ancestor down here and the different modern forms of animals up here, you would have one form to begin with and then it would gradually diverge into slightly different forms and more and more different until you get the major differences that we see now. The problem with the Cambrian explosion is that all these major differences appear together at the same time with no fossil evidence that they descended from this common ancestor. The article reported on cutting-edge research by Chinese scientist J.Y. Chen an internationally respected paleontologist at the Nanjing Institute of Paleontology and Geology. Chin's discoveries in the fossil beds in Xinjiang, China, have rocked the scientific establishment. Located in the province of Yunnan in southern China, Xinjiang has some of the world's best preserved fossils from the Cambrian era. Darwinism helps them maybe only telling a part story for evolution. According to Chen, the fossils he's discovered turn Darwin's tree of life upside down. Darwin is a tree, you know, a reverse condition. Very unexpectedly, our research is convincing uh, major phyllos starting down below at the beginning of Cambria. Base is white, gradually narrow, so this is almost uh, turned down different way. This situation refutes the theory of evolution for sure, because Darwin wrote in The Origin of Species, if numerous species belonging to the same genera or families have really started into life all at once, the fact would be fatal to the theory of descent with slow modification through natural selection. This fatal stroke that frightened Darwin comes from the Cambrian period, right at the outset of the fossil record. No fossil remains supporting evolution have ever been unearthed in excavations conducted in every corner of the world. Professor Roberto Fondi is a specialist in paleontology. He teaches at the Department of Earth Sciences in the University of Siena in Italy. You may be surprised to know that the fundamental assumptions upon which evolutionary thinking is based are not at all confirmed by paleontology. All the biological groups, from bacteria and blue-green algae to man, appear abruptly in the fossil record without any links connecting them with each other. Why is it then that so many people believe the fossils prove evolution? Evolution is presented to grown-ups and taught to the very young as a fact that has been verified and demonstrated for so long that it is a waste of time and even ridiculous to question it. So, what is the truth of the matter? Well, there is a history book of the past and that is the rocks and the fossilized remains in them. So, it is up to the paleontologist to read that book and give the answer. And what do you read in that book, Professor? 
In questo libro io leggo semplicemente che The fact is that after nearly two centuries of intense research, the paleontological evidence for evolutionary theory is not only rare but highly questionable. The point is that if evolution had really happened, the evidence would be in great abundance and incontestable. The museums would be overflowing with fossils, clearly documenting the transitions between the various biological groups. Yet there are none. Moreover, there is no indication that the situation will change in the future. Those very few fossils, which are claimed to show some kind of evolutionary link, such as the amphibian Ichthyostica and Simoria, the reptile Propnognathus, the bird Archaeopteryx, and the Australopithecine ape called Homo habilis are very far from conclusive.